Uh, I'm just a businessman who came into politics because I wanted to change things. I felt the European project was the wrong thing for the United Kingdom. And as the years have gone by, I actually think the European project is wrong itself. You know, I, I am European. I'm not anti-Europe. Uh, but I do think a Europe of nation states that work and trade together as close neighbours is far preferable to a Europe run by a European Commission based in Brussels that wants to be a state. It's just as simple as that. The reason it can't be reformed is, I mean, for example, once a month we go to Strasbourg. You know, this sort of travelling circus that goes back and forth from Brussels to Strasbourg. And yet to reform that would need unanimity, would need all the member states to vote for it at a Council of Ministers meeting, and of course the French will never do that. And that proves they've set up a system that's very difficult to change. I, do you know what? If you look back, sort of 1948, uh, the idea, you know, of a European Council, of member states, and I, I've got no problem with us working incredibly closely together, but we do it as friends, we do it as neighbours, we don't do it effectively as subordinates of a new government set up in Brussels. So yes, I do think that post-war model actually needs to be revisited. We've got the vote we want, uh, we've got the promise that we're going to leave, the question is on what terms do we leave, and the frustration is that, the, well firstly, the European Commission are behaving like bullies, and in the face of that, the British government um, are making, I think, too many concessions. It's all taking too long. So yeah, we won the big battle, but I think there may be some more small battles to fight over the course of the next couple of years. Well, I like to think that having worked in business for 20 years, unlike almost everybody else in the, in, in, in the British government, that I might have done better. But hey, who's to say? They didn't ask me. If they'd asked me to help, I'd have been only too happy to. I'm talking about the Old West, and the Old West, I mean by that North, you know, America and Europe. That's really what I'm talking about. Um, I, yeah, it is a revolution, because it is, it is I, mean, I mean, think about Brexit. Brexit is an instruction from the electorate to the government to turn the course of the country around by 180 degrees. That's quite a revolution. And in America, you know, Trump is seen to be somebody, uh, you know, who is completely throwing over the tables in Washington in a way that they've never seen before. Well, I, do you know something? I know a lot of people that have worked with Trump, uh, worked with Trump in business, and they all say the same thing. If Trump likes you and shakes your hand, he is your friend for life. And that is what businessmen are like. You know, businessmen may choose their friends very carefully. Businessmen may not always have an outward persona that appeals to everyone, but when a businessman trusts somebody, that's a very important and powerful thing. Trump is a force for change. You know, he's not there because he wants you to love him. He's there because he feels the American system needed shaking up seriously, and that's exactly what he's trying to do. He, I mean, I tell you what, he is a man of his word. Well, he's faced some obstacles, goodness me. I mean, not least of which in his own Republican Party and through the judiciary. So it's a heck of a difficult job. You know, you go to Washington, it's rather like Brussels. You see the size of the buildings. You feel the power that's there. It's not easy to change it. But I tell you what, he's having a good try. Um. It's very odd because, of course, in Europe, it's the younger people who are voting for the more radical parties and the more radical options. I mean, in Austria, the Freedom Party got the biggest number of votes of under-30s. In France, Marine Le Pen got those votes. In Greece, with a left-wing, Syriza, it was the under-30s that voted for them. And in Italy, the Five Star Movement, which is, I guess, kind of centre-left, is getting the under-30s voting for it. So it's really interesting that the rebellion in Europe is coming from the younger generation. In the UK, it's coming from the older one. It's uh, an anomaly that none of us can explain.